Hey everybody, this is Thomas with another uh, graph editor tutorial for Source Filmmaker. Uh, we're doing something a little different today, something I've been uh, debating whether or not I wanted to do. Yeah, thank you. Okay, uh, anyways, um, the I've been debating whether or not I wanted to do more advanced animation techniques, and a lot of people have been asking for them, so I've decided that I'm going to go ahead and go that direction. We're kind of going beyond learning the software and more focusing on, okay, how do I use that software? How do I use these tools that I have to accomplish what I want? So that's what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be looking at the concept of a uh, walk cycle. Now, keep in mind, I mean, this is really something important because when you're directing, which is really what this tool is about, is, is creating your own movies, you want to work with the tools that are given to you in the best possible way. And a lot of the time, it's just going to make a lot more sense to do animation sequences. You know, importing and then choosing a sequence. If you want to get a heavy walking or running, you know, that's going to be the way to go. If you're doing an acting scene, something that requires specific motion over a short period of time, this is what you're going to want be wanting to do. So well, we're just going to talk about the basics. Before we do that, I want to get myself on camera if I can. Okay. This is important. At this point, if you're, and by the way, before, um, if you go any farther in this video, if you haven't seen the previous videos or you haven't really gotten what I was talking about in those previous videos nailed down, I've done them in this order for a reason. Please go back and view those first and, and get a handle on exactly what I'm trying to communicate there because this is what we would consider advanced techniques. Um, this is a book really worth checking out if this is the kind of stuff you find you like doing. It's called The Animator's Survival Kit. It's written by Richard Williams. He has spent his whole life in animation and he directed Who Framed Roger Rabbit. And, you know, he. It, it, this is the best book in the world for this topic. Uh, anybody who animates should own this book if they don't. I mean, they. anyone who animates does own this book. What am I saying? If you don't own this book, you probably haven't been animating for very long. So um, we're going to talk about the page where he talks about walk cycles. And I just wanted to show you this image really quick. This is uh, a general walk cycle. You'll notice that there's really only four key frames, if we're going to call them frames, or four key elements in a walk. Uh, the first one, you've got the contact. And I really want to point this out here. So you can see you've got the foot that makes initial contact and then the foot plant, and you want to look at the relationship between the hips and the foot. So you'll notice that as the foot plants, the hips slowly pivot off of that foot, uh, rotate, and eventually the hips are coming over the foot. Notice it's planted the whole time, it's not moving. And then there's a little bit of a lift where the foot is you doing the pushing forward motion, and the hips are going up. And then just, you know, basically the idea is it makes room for the foot, the other foot to pass so that it then can make contact and it's the exact same position as back here. So you've got one, two, three, four positions and we're just looking at the legs here just in case you were wondering. So we've got that foot that makes contact, it plants, and then it pushes off uh, to prepare for the next contact. And in case you're ever wondering about the dynamics of a walk, Walk is actually a series of controlled falls. Um, you may notice that when you start walking, if you ever actually paid attention, uh, when you start to walk, you lean forward, and that's because you're falling. You're choosing to fall, but then you're choosing to continuously catch yourself so that you have a forward perpetual motion. The other thing I want to point out here is you'll notice that the head is moving up and down. And the reason for that is uh, that's just what happens. <laughs> when you're pivoting off of your foot like that, you just get that up and downward motion. Notice that when the foot initially plants, it's you know the, the momentum, the body's coming down, catching itself from the fall. So the head is at its lowest point, and then it's at its highest point uh, when it's doing that push off I was mentioning for the, the passing of the other foot right before the contact. So that's the basics. And now I'm gonna close this, and we're gonna talk about uh, how we can actually accomplish this in the graph editor. So I've got a little motion I created of the heavy and he uh... <laughs> okay that's left over from another uh, from another try of the tutorial I'd done where I was just messing around with uh, some fun ways of, of using these techniques alright so let me uh, delete those keys really quick I apologize do, 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 do. delete them those okay and just ignore the feet so 
I've created this upper body motion just to get us going a general motion that we can work with and that will ultimately be the speed at which the heavy walks. So uh, let's apply what I was just talking about to this heavy and let's just get let's just get right down to it. So where's that heavy? The V key is how I find them. There we go. Let's come on in here. Heavy. So let's go ahead and take a look at the hips because the hips is ultimately what's driving the character not the root as I discussed in the last video very important alright so you can see we got this upward and downward motion and that's ultimately what's going to be um, determining our walk again the lowest point is when the body is catching itself and the highest point is when he's pushing off and right in between there is where we have the contact so let's go ahead and do that let's start with uh, the, con the contact but first we'll make some keys here and we're just going to start right in the middle so we can get an idea so we've got that key and then we're going to go forward one two three four that should be the lowest point one two three four one two three four there's the lowest point he starts going back up one two three four so there's four poses and then one, two, three, four would be the next pose in the series. Alright, so let's go ahead and start with the contact. And we've already got this wonderful foot already forward, so let's just start with that one. So that heel is just going to touch, oops, make sure we're on that axis, there we go. Yeah, so there's the initial heel contact there. And then the other foot is going to be back here. And it's a little stretching there, so we're going to. I'm going to make sure this stride makes sense. Stride. Okay, I may have to get him lower on the ground if the stride doesn't make sense. I think that he's t a little bit too high. So let's go ahead and get him closer to the ground really quick. Apply all of time. Let's bring him down. I think that makes a little more sense. Okay. Oh, don't forget to move the hands with the pelvis. They all kind of go together. All right, back to the graph editor. Okay, so now we've got a little bit bigger of a stride that makes a little more sense. There we go, that looks a lot better. Yeah, he's a little more down to earth heavy. Okay, so now we're gonna copy and paste this key. The reason we do this is because this foot is gonna stay in place for pretty much the rest of these next four frames. So we're gonna go ahead and copy and paste that key and we're gonna plant the foot to the ground. And then we're going to copy and paste that again, because in this spot, that foot stays where it is. And then finally, we'll do it again uh, for here. But in this example, or in this instance, we're having that. Is that right? One, two, three, four. No. Yes. That makes sense. Okay. And we'll make sure that all of these are either in linear or in flat. Either one will work properly. So I like to use flat. So you get that foot plant, and then it kind of just stays there. And then it does the little push off. And then we'll have the contact position again. So let's go ahead and do that. One, two, three, four. Why not? And I think the height worked out pretty well. It worked out pretty well. There we go. Maybe a little too far forward. We'll, we'll work on that later. We're just going to focus on these four frames here for now. So let's go to the other foot in the shot. So this looks good. Now this next foot obviously is way too far forward now. So let's go ahead and give it a starting point. We'll just keep him back there. And now we'll move him forward. So if we remember the picture, the foot's kind of just dragging along and the important thing is you kind of want the toe to just kind of graceful uh, brush along the ground there 
and yeah, that looks good. He's just kind of coming down, planting his foot there. And then the next shot, his foot should be passing. So let's make sure we're selecting everything. Again, copy paste. So foot should just be kind of, again, the foot right here, t technically in this position, you kind of have a little bit of freedom, but the f the heavy should technically have his hips right over the foot in this pose, like I showed you in that picture. But, you know, we can get away with it for now. I think, honestly, ultimately he's moving a little too fast. I'm going to slow him down. And the way I'm going to do that is... I could use the motion editor, but I am more comfortable with this, so we're going to choose position X. Don't need these keys. No, maybe I need that one. So he looks good here. He's a little far forward here. So let's. Don't forget to move the hands with him. Just a little bit back here. Just a quick fix, guys. Sorry about that. But you know what? Animation's always about tweaking. And then we'll make sure that that matches the speed at which he's going there. That looks good. Okay, back to the back foot. We've already got one, two, three poses nailed down. We just need the last one, which is the push off. And in this case, the foot actually lifts a little bit because it has to switch to a um, uh, getting to that final contact pose. So like that. And then let's make our final pose. So one, two, three, four. And again, uh, the four frames, by the way, guys, this is just based on the speed of the motion I wanted him to go. I created the motion first because that's how fast I wanted him to walk, and I'm animating on top of that. And it's really important that you do that. Otherwise, you're kind of just... Um, this is what's called pose-to-pose -pose animation as opposed to, um, I guess, I can't remember the official name for it, but you're basically kind of just animating off the cuff. You're starting at a point and just kind of seeing what happens, and that can be messy if you're trying to direct a scene. So anyways, we've got this final pose here, and the foot is going to be making contact. So we should have rotation up like before. So the heel should just be planting there. Make sure this looks good from all angles here. Let's bring it back just a little bit. There we go. Again, I still feel like the hips are just a little moving a little too fast, but I'm going to live with that just for the purposes of this tutorial. Do, 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 like that. All right, now we're going to select everything. Oh, this uh, pose was never done properly, so we're just going to go ahead and start here. And then I can use the two key to make them all flat. Actually, this one here looks like he could be a spline. So we'll make him a spline just to be happy. OK. So starting here, look at that. Just this little bit here does not look great. It looks like he's taking a step, that's for sure. Now we're going to want to duplicate this. You know, we're basically, we take this point and we just duplicate what we just did one foot after the other. And uh, in the next, this is actually part one of a two part tutorial. So the next part I do will be taking this, you know, I'm going to go ahead and build this walk out. And then we'll talk about what to do with the rest of the body along with the feet. I really just want to nail down this concept of four key poses because the, this basic concept is really what you want to know. So with that in mind, uh, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial, and um, I will go over more of this. Again, I will make a second part, but for now, uh, you know, try this out. Oh, and actually, before I finish, I wanted to talk about the flexibility of these different poses and how you don't want to deviate from it. So you saw earlier I was fooling around a little bit with these four poses. Now, because it's four poses, you can do pretty much 
anything you want as long as it falls in these restrictions. So for example, I have my passing period here, but maybe for the plant, I decide, and let's go ahead and just key the spine here so that it's on the same basic frame. So key, 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 key. All right, let's say for the spine, I'm going to have him plant his foot, bam, and the heavy just leans over and my phone's ringing. Um, we're just going to make a funny walk here. So let's just say, don't. And then we can, for this passing position, we can have him be down like this. And then he can come up, be back like that, and don't break the character there. So now we've got this funny walk where he's kind of like doing this little uh, march. Maybe that's a little too dramatic. We'll have him just start down like that. There we go. Whoop. So that's an example of something you could do with the passing positions. You could do the same thing with the uh, feet. So I could, uh, this guy stays plucking to mess with him, but we can mess with this foot here. So let's say instead of just coming up naturally like a normal person would if they're casually walking, we can have it kind of going back a little bit, not in an unrealistic way. Maybe rotate it. Whoop. Like that. And then maybe I can hold this back a little more. And then just have him kick out. Just like I do a big old kick. Like that. That's a little too much motion for four frames. So let's just go ahead and move this guy like that. There we go. Bam. So now we've got a funny walk, where before we just had a completely normal looking walk, now we have this kind of funny walk. And you can see where the, um, the flexibility comes from. So <laughs> there's a lot of stuff you could do with this. I mean, obviously you want to try the basic walk first. Maybe you want to try something like um, moving the hips to the right or the left. So if we have him plant his foot there, and then he comes over, maybe his hips move onto that foot like that. And again, I don't want to ruin this by going over stuff I'm going to go over in the next tutorial. But maybe maybe I can have the hips do, do something a little funkier. Maybe in, if he's going to push off, right, um, maybe he gets down really low, a lot lower than we had before. And then up. And he just goes up. Well... That would have to be a jump at that point. Maybe he just stays low. There we go. There we go. And eventually you're going to start breaking the walks. So you got to be careful. But yeah, that, that narrows down the basics. So this, I hope this was a lot of fun to watch. It's going to be a lot more fun, I promise you, to actually do it yourself. So four poses. Uh, they got names. Uh, contact. Um, I guess you'd call this a follow-through. Passing position. Um, push off and then contact again. Uh, so yeah, check it out. Uh, and if you can pick up the Animator Survival Kit book, uh, do that too. That's a lot of fun, a lot of great stuff in there for creating realistic motion. Anyways, I will see you guys in the next tutorial. Have fun and I'll see you on Reddit.